Hello everyone, Sheila Willis here again. This is one segment that I have been looking forward to. Um, I'm with the History Check app and you can download it at historycheck.ca. This is, I'm well, this is Justin and I've just actually met him in person, but I've kind of been dealing with the, your organization for a while, yep. which is the Alberta Sasquatch Organization. So that to me is fascinating. And I'm going to tell my story and then we'll kind of get into some of your stories. Sure. When I was in grade one, we had recently moved to Salmon Arm, BC. So I don't know if whoever's out there has ever been to Salmon Arm. If you went to Tap and there was a house on the side of the road and we called it the Carlin House, but it became a bed and breakfast. And I was playing kind of towards Tap and at the base of this hill. So and remember, I'm grade one, so what's that, six years old or something like that? And I'm playing and I look up at the hill and I see two adults and two children. I would say maybe if I was thinking in human terms, grade two to three, like about that height, walking up the hill. And the interesting thing about them was that they were naked and hairy. So <laughs> I, went, I went to tell my mom, why are these naked, hairy people walking up the hill? And she was like, you're imagining things. But in my opinion, how do you imagine that when you're in grade one? Like, where does that imagination come from? Mm -hmm. So I personally, and I will declare it here, I am a believer. Most people in my family think I'm nuts. And that's okay, because I still stick with the, I saw what I saw. Exactly. So, <laughs> so tell us more about what your organization is and what you do. Well, the organization, which, you know, the main focus point of it is the website, the Alberta mm -hmm. Sasquatch Organi Organization website. It's a, it's basically a place that people can go to file a report. Because mm -hmm. a lot of these people, they want to tell somebody, but they usually can't, whether yeah. it be because they're scared to tell people, they're scared of getting ridiculed, you oh. know, things of that nature. So they have a place where they can go and file a report and maybe get some information about it. And Mm -hmm. and kind of put them on a map and see where all these things are happening and then base our investigations on where these things are happening. Yeah. It's, it's basically like an archive of all of the sightings and it mm -hmm. assists us in researching and it assists the people who have had these experiences in, you know, getting that off their chest. Yeah. So they okay, can... I got to tell someone, but I don't know who it is because like my mom, you're imagining things or... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The cool, the cool thing about the website is that we, you know, have it formatted in a way that's like pretty modern. So we're trying to kind of draw in younger people and kind of make it seem a bit more up to date and mm -hmm. cool, you know, yeah. to be into the subject. It's we're, not as taboo as it used to be. So people yeah. can feel more welcome. And, you know, it's a lot more popular nowadays. So I bet it is. Yeah. Well, and it kind of follow up falls under this similar umbrella but not the same as UFO sightings. Right. You know, it used to be that you were, you know, right off your rocker if you thought you saw something flying through the sky that wasn't exactly recognizable to you. Yeah. And I would think that some of these sightings are similar. Mm -hmm. Now, I found you guys actually through one of your sighting reports that was near my home at the Salto River on the highway, Highway 2 going towards Slave Lake. And I think that was in the 80s, although I'm not sure anymore. But the guy, you know, late at night in this unexplainable, obviously not a bear or a link, was there, right? Mm -hmm. But then when we started talking, I had not realized, and I'm going to let you pick up here, David Thompson, the map maker from way back when, saw some interesting things in Jasper. Yeah, in that area, I think, yeah, 1811, he some tracks mm -hmm. and well Jasper back then was nothing yeah nothing it was, was not Jasper yeah <laughs> and, and I've had people tell me that they have had sightings or knew people that have had sightings back probably like 20 or 30 years ago in the Jasper area mm -hmm. but I think nowadays due to like the high level of tourism and people going through there and hiking all over the place mm -hmm. things are pretty calm in that area like we haven't had any reports of Jasper yeah well and reclusive right yeah I don't think Sasquatches want to be discovered. Otherwise, they would be out shaking people's hands. But hey, <laughs> we, we think that, but I have, there's a part of me that thinks that there's a curiosity about them. 
mm-hmm. where you kind of get interested in people, so they'll kind of come out and, and you know, kind of mess with people who are out by themselves. Oh, yeah. It might be kind of an entertaining thing for them it could to be. do. And that's why these people have these encounters, because for a creature that, that you think wouldn't want to be discovered, In the bush. In the bush. Yeah, that's true. Whether and it be to, to just scare them away or... Who knows? Uh, I don't know. Um, I have a friend, and I'm not going to say who it is, but was telling me about a friend of theirs. I'm not even sure what, where this was, but it was in northeastern Alberta, if I'm right. They had gone fishing at a regular fishing hole and heard this splashing and looked over. It was underneath the bridge. They were ne- next to one of the smaller bridges. And this thing, Sasquatch, was peeking out from around the bridge piling and then you know they were watching it and it was almost like it was looking either looking at them curious or how do I get out of here without anybody seeing me so they kind of averted their eyes for a bit off to the next so and eventually made it to the bush right right so that kind of fits both scenarios almost yeah and at the end of the day at this point we don't really know what no. the reasons are no and, and by the time we figure it out, those ones that did that for that reason are probably going to be gone. Yeah, they're so, gonna be long gone yeah. so there's, we've had a few discussions. There's some really interesting things going on in Alberta right now. Mm-hmm. And the first one is at Grand Prairie Museum. Yes. And I believe it's running until September, and I can't remember if it's the first or the end of September. Uh, at the end of September, um, we're actually going to be holding a, a presentation. There. Oh. So, it's going to be, I believe, on the 28th. Hopefully okay. that doesn't change, and I'm mm-hmm. not misquoting anyone, but yeah. I heard the 28th, and we're going to be doing a presentation uh, during the day, and then in the evening, uh, we're going to have Dr. Jeff Meldrum, who's a pretty well-known uh, biologist. Mm-hmm. He's a professor from, from Idaho. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to be coming up and uh, talking about the Patterson Bridge in California oh, back in the 60s, that mm-hmm. really famous clip. So that is kind of a brief rundown of how that day is going to go. But if cool. anyone wants to come up and check it out, it's okay. pretty neat. And I alluded to this, and I was not really clear about what I was saying. So right now at the Grand Prairie Museum, obviously in Grand Prairie, they have a Sasquatch exhibit. And i it's the first one of its kind or first one in Alberta? I think the first one in Alberta. First one in Alberta. Yeah. So if you want to go check that out, it's one of your more unique museum exhibits, I would assume. <laughs> there are weird ones in Alberta, like there's a gopher museum. Yeah, too, the there? gopher <laughs> museum, yeah. There's weirder things out there. Yeah, that that's thing. true. But, you know, a way to investigate the whole unknown or... Yeah, it's, it's a good entry curious. point for people. To there we go, that's the word something. I'm looking for, yeah. yeah. And then another thing that's just happened, and you know Ken Walker, have you met him? I know Ken Walker. Okay, I've never personally met him, I've just talked to him on the phone a lot. Ken Walker is from Alberta Beach, and he is a world-class taxidermist who is very adamant in his belief on Sasquatches to the point where he built one through his taxidermy skills. Yep. So, and then he took it down to one of the taxidermy conventions or I don't know if it was a convention or a con- uh, you know they were voting on who's the best or whatever but he put this thing up in in a hallway and you should have seen the selfie people there were people like walking up to this thing doing that <laughs> and then, of yeah. course it's the <laughs> take a picture with it well, the interesting thing about that is when Ken has that display in his shop and hunters come to visit him or to get some work done um, it's it's a, like he, he can look at people who are walk, who are observing the thing and tell if they have really had an experience mm-hmm. just yeah. by the way they look at it. Like, is that what I saw? Or yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, quite a few interesting tales that have come up in the hunting community around here that you don't hear about online. Mm-hmm. Just a lot of people don't want to tell. But as as Ken would say, he's like the hairdresser of the, of yeah. the hunting world. So he hears all the gossip and all the mm-hmm. good stories. So yeah, it's good for him. He's He's very knowledgeable on the subject. I can never remember what her name is. It's a female Sasquatch display. Dora? No, that's not it. Um, I can't remember, but it's 
it's still pretty cool. Uh, I just want to make sure to see if we've got any. I didn't get my notification that we were going live. Do you see any comments in there? Christine Yancey is watching. Hi, Christine. Hi, Hello. and and Lucia Van Boxtel Dixon. Dixon okay. is watching. But there's no comments. Nobody's asking questions because you can if you'd like. Okay, so um, Ken has now also had a documentary made. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure who spearheaded that, but it's I've only seen the trailer. That thing looks cool, and it's called Big Fur. So you can go look at it at bigfur.com, I believe. I believe so. Too. Yeah. And if you'd like to see his Sasquatch display, you can search on YouTube, Ken Walker, and then I think this it'll, you'll see it. You can't miss it. It's pretty big, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So any other really cool stories that you can think of or sightings or... I mean, so you, mentioned, you mentioned Slave Lake, and actually recently we did an interview with a guy who had an experience near Slave Lake. Oh. This is like very recent, the beginning of the month. Wow. And he ended up seeing this thing that kind of peered through the trees and rolled Ooh. on its face and everything. Wow. His wife saw it, and it freaked them all out. But I bet it did. There are things going around, not just in like the mountainous regions of the province, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of things going on further east, which is interesting, like north of Edmonton, um, more boreal forest yeah, even, yeah, even really out east, like in the Lapwood Bish area, there's oh. been sightings, hmm. which is really yeah. interesting, and Ken Walker knows all about that stuff, he's, yeah. he's the guy to go to, he has information. And in actuality, if, if I had to say, take a 90% guess on the one I was telling you about the bridge pilings, I would say it would be the Lapwood Bish region somewhere in that right. region somewhere in that ballpark. Now I think, and you, on your website, you have a map of sightings so people can go look at the pinpoints mm -hmm. on it and that was kind of cool. And what we're doing from our end, because I think there's more interest, like you said, it's the hidden interest. We've only got four or five on now, but you can search Bigfoot on History Check okay. and see some of those sightings, like the Salto one. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to you guys probably two years ago when I obviously, busy 2.5 people building this whole thing right you yeah. can only type so fast and so as we're moving along we want to get more and more of that on there mm -hmm. and then of course they all link into your site for more information so it's kind of cool that yeah. cross referencing I guess yeah it is well and and the feedback too right so you can make comments oh, I was kind of in this area so yeah the cool thing too is that in a lot of these areas where people have had Bigfoot sightings, there's also a lot of other history, like a lot of mining history, how the area got a Bighorn Dam. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other interesting things going on. Lost mines. Um, mm -hmm. Have you heard of Mountain Park? It's up northwest of Norway. It's actually an abandoned mining yeah, town. Yeah, I think so. Lots of really cool things you can come across when you're out or if you're out looking for these creatures. Yeah. It's not just the Bigfoot thing. It's this whole big adventure. Yeah, you get to do the whole the full meal deal out yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, cool. Well, if I feel like we're forgetting something and I can't think of what it is. Okay, we've got the Grand Prairie Museum yep. has their exhibit. We've got the Big Fur documentary coming in. We've got you guys coming back at September 28th to Grand Prairie. And it seems like there was another documentary or film that was recently done in Alberta or by an Albertan in California. Hmm. Maybe not. I might be losing it. I might could have something totally different. So anyways, we're going to close it off. Go to albertasasquatch.com. Yeah, albertasasquatch.com. Also, maybe I should mention, uh, I have a YouTube channel called Mountain Beast Mysteries. Oh, yes. And I make my own kind of YouTube exclusive documentaries, I call them, or glorified YouTube videos that are like <laughs> feature length. Yeah. And, and they're, it's all Sasquatch based. Cool. So you'll see me in most of the videos and you'll also see other members of mm -hmm. the Alberta Sasquatch organization. And uh, Ken Walker is also one of the ones that I'm okay. interview cool. them. So if you want to you know, find out who Ken Walker is,
is what email is that that would be a place to do that would it. be the place to, to do it so and I think you just got my missing piece because films were rolling around my brain so YouTube 